Hey guys, welcome back to a new video and first of all I want to wish you the happiest new year here on YouTube. I hope you really had a great 2021 here and I wish all of you, every single one, that you will have an amazing 2022, that you will reach all your goals and I can tell you it can change so much if you actually stick to something consistently and focus on just a very few things, but be really serious with that. I can tell you I have big plans for this year here on my YouTube channel and on other platforms, so you can really be excited for the type of content you will get in future. However, that's not what we are here for. We're actually here for a new format that I'd actually like to introduce on my channel. And that is called Philips Android News or short PAN. So I found that it's actually really hard to stay up to date in Android because things just change so quickly and there is not that single source where you can actually get Android developer news. So that's why I think I will make such a format. I will research everything for you once a month and then have such a video here where I will just go through the major changes that happened that actually affect us Android developers in the past month. So you can just lean back, watch this five, sometimes 10, maybe sometimes 20 minute video. And after that, you know, you actually didn't miss any crazy changes in Android and you are up to date. So whether it is like a new Kotlin update with new features or like a new library that really um, that's important for us Android developers, you will find it in these news videos here, which I will post every single month on the first Wednesday of the month. So mark that in your calendar. That is when you will actually receive these PAN Philips Android news. And I will also always link all the sources I actually use to find out these news down in the video's description. So if you want to dive deeper into that, then you can simply look there and click these links. And in this video, I will go through the major changes that affected us Android developers from December 2021. Yes, it was 21. So starting with Kotlin, it actually received a new version update from 1.6.0 to 1.6.10. And that actually wasn't a crazy update, just some bug fixes and improvements. And if you use that new Kotlin version, which you can simply do by updating your Kotlin plugin in Android Studio, then you also want to make sure if you use Compose, then you need to use the new Jetpack Compose compiler version, uh, it is, let me quickly take a look, 1.1.0-RC02. So you need to use that Compose compiler version in combination with Kotlin 1.6.10 to make it work. The next new thing is that Google released API level 32. So Android 12 is API level 31 and 32 is basically also Android 12, but like a newer version. And you can also get that if you are in the Google beta program. So then you can get it on your device or you can simply install that on your emulator in Android Studio. There are not too many crazy changes in that new API level. However, they still focus a lot on UX and stability improvements. And one thing that I actually found interesting is they, they actually focus a lot on supporting or rather yet to provide more helpful features for bigger screens. So on large screens like tablets, you now have the option to have um, a special task bar, you can say in the bottom where you have some apps, your favorite apps, your just most used apps. And you can simply use these to drag these to the left or the right to um, split your screen, which is pretty cool. And that actually reminded me a little bit of iOS because on iPad we have a similar feature, but it's still cool and important to know that Google actually likes to focus on also larger screens in future, um, especially to make them look great out of the box. That's what they wrote. So even if you don't specifically support this split screen behavior, for example, with your app, then this new API 32 release still contain some improvements to, to make this look better out of the box by default. If you want to see how this actually looks like, they had some great GIF in their, uh, on their blog article, then simply check the sources down below. And let's get to the final big change that I actually find really promising. And that is a new framework called Jetpack Glance. So that just got released in the alpha. What is that? It's basically 
that you can use Jetpack Compose to build app widgets. And that's super cool. So these little things that you have on your device's home screen, you can now create these with Jetpack Compose. However, it is not fully interoperable with Jetpack Compose. So if you already have some composables in your project, you can't use these for your widgets, sadly, because Jetpack Glance works a little bit differently. It has its own kind of composables, which they call Glanceables. It works the same, so you can still use normal composables functions, but they have, for example, some special modifier, and you can just not take your existing composables and put them in an app widget, but you can still use the normal type of compose design to create your app widgets now. And let's actually now take a look in how that works. So here in an empty compose project, or not really empty, I implemented Glance here. Uh, this is not meant to be a tutorial, just to give you a quick impression how this works. So first of all, what you want to do is you want to include these two dependencies here. Uh, currently it's, yeah, the snapshot, or there's also an alpha dependency. So it's in the very early stage, note that. You also want to make sure that you have this Maven repository. I will also push this code to my GitHub. You will find it down below. And then we can actually start to create our very own widget. So our home screen widget, and I called it Hello World widget because it's just, yeah, that's what it does. It just displays a Hello World text. But as you can see, that inherits from Glance app widget, which then uh, comes with this content function, which needs to be implemented. You can see override. And you also need to annotate this with composable. So now inside here, you can simply call your composable functions. However, as I said, it's not interoperable with Jetpack Compose, which is a little bit sad. Um, so you can't use your existing composables. Here you need to use the special glance modifiers. You can't use the normal ones. So if I use modifier here and import these things, you can see it gives us an error because that's not a glance modifier. Um, but yeah, so you basically just create your widget in here from scratch. And as I said, I find it a little bit sad that it's not interoperable. But I'm also not in a position that I understand the internal details of that enough to assess um, how, how possible it would have been to make this interoperable with normal Jetpack Compose. And then when we have this Glance App widget here, we also want to define this Glance App widget receiver. That in the end is nothing else than a broadcast receiver that just serves the purpose that if the user interacts with your widget, this receiver will be triggered. So obviously your app is not um, active all the time but your user could interact with your widget all the time so your app somehow needs to receive these events when the user interacts with the widget that's what you do here you need to override this glance app widget in which you just return the widget you just created here uh, the hello world widget and then you're already good to go and the next thing you need to do is what you also needed to do if you wanted to create widgets using just xml you created this XML RAS folder here and an XML file in that for your widget. So here you define this app widget provider in which you just give it a description, um, just minimum width, minimum height, initial layout. That needs to be in XML. So you can't provide the initial layout in Compose yet. I don't know if they will change it, but yeah, here yeah, that's, that's just a progress bar and we won't see it because there is no delay in our case. You can define a preview image, which I just chose the Android robot resize mode. So how you want the user to be able to resize it and the widget category. So what kind of widget it is here? It's just a normal home screen widget that we can drag around on our home screen. And finally, the last step here we need to do is we need to go to our manifest and register this broadcast receiver. So our hello world widget receiver. That's what you need to do for any broadcast receiver. You want to have this intent filter to receive this action when the app widget actually updated. And just some metadata here that, yeah, where we just define, hey, here you can find this info about our app widget. But that's everything you need to do to create your very own app widget with Jetpack Compose. Let's actually take a look here how this now looks like in my device. Um, when we hold on my home screen here, Go to widgets then we see all the apps that support widgets here and you can also see here is jetpack glance that's the app i created if we open this and then hold on that widget icon um or not 
sometimes yeah now it works so we can now drag it you can see it actually occupies two cells if we leave it boom there is our hello world text that we actually created with jpeg compose we can resize it but it will just occupy the space it really needs so that's super cool super cool new framework and i'm very excited where this will go in future and that's already it for this month's pan Please let me know down below how you like this new format, if you find this helpful, and if you have any special wishes for the future, any things I should change how I do this, then please let me know that. Give this video a like, and if you also want to have more than just news and some Android-specific tips, Kotlin tips, then you also should sign up to my free email newsletter, which you can just do here in this video's description, just entering your email, and then you will already receive all these weekly Android tips for free.